How are you guys doing? Today is Monday, March 1st, 2021, out here in this quarantine. I'm James Sims, and for this episode of The Elite, I'm going to review the Elite matchups and performances from yesterday, Sunday, February 28th. And of course, I'm going to preview everything that goes on today as we navigate through the world of sports one day at a time. Um, because the MLB just started with spring training and the NFL is no longer in season. I'm going to get started with the NBA, looking into last night's uh, primetime performances, starting in Milwaukee. The Milwaukee Bucks were able to beat the Los Angeles Clippers 105 to 100 in Milwaukee after outscoring the Clippers by nine points in the fourth quarter. In this matchup for the Los Angeles Clippers, their elite starting shooting guard Paul George would finish with 16 points, seven rebounds, and seven assists in 38 minutes as he shot seven for 21 from the field and two for 10 from three. And the leading scorer for the Los Angeles Clippers would be their goaded small forward Kawhi Leonard, who finished with 25 points, nine rebounds, three assists, and two steals in 37 seven minutes as he shot 10 for 21 from the field, two for six from three, and three for four from the line. For the Milwaukee Bucks in this matchup, their leading score would be their elite starting power forward, reigning back-to-back MVP Giannis Antetokounmpo, who finished with 36 points, 14 rebounds, and five assists, as well as four blocks in 40 minutes as Giannis shot 15 for 27 from the field, two for seven from three, and four for six from the line. With this win, the Milwaukee Bucks are 21 and 13. That is the third best record in the Eastern Conference. In the playoff picture, they are half a game behind the Brooklyn Nets. They are also three and a half games ahead of the fourth place New York Knicks. Yes, you heard that right. Um, And with this win, they've now won five straight and they've won five of their last 10 um, just to get right back in that playoff push. And then, of course, with this loss, the Los Angeles Clippers are now sitting third in the Western Conference as they currently trail the reigning NBA champs, uh, the Los Angeles Lakers, by half a game, and they trail the first place Utah Jazz by four total games in the Western Conference. Jumping out to Los Angeles, the Los Angeles Lakers hosted the Golden State Warriors, and in this matchup, the Lakers would pull out a 117-91 win after outscoring Golden State by 29 points in the first half. For the Golden State Warriors, their goaded point guard Stephen Curry would finish with 16 points, 4 rebounds, 7 assists, and 3 steals in 26 minutes as Curry shot 5 for 13 from the field, 2 for 7 from 3, and 4 for 5 from the free throw line. And the leading scorer for the Golden State Warriors would come off the bench as their power forward, their second year power forward Eric Pascal would finish with 18 points in 22 minutes, shooting 8 for 14 from the field and sinking his only free throw of the night. For the Los Angeles Lakers in this matchup, their leading scorer would be their goaded small forward LeBron James, who finished with 19 points, 6 rebounds, 4 assists, 2 steals, and 2 blocks in 24 minutes as LeBron shot 7 for 12 from the field, 3 for 5 from 3, and 2 for 4 from the free throw line. With this win, the Los Angeles Lakers are now 24-11. and 11. That is the second best record in the Western Conference as they trail the first place Utah Jazz by three and a half games. They are also half of a game ahead of their Staples Center roommates, the Los Angeles Clippers, as the Lakers have won their last two games. Um, and just giving you, that's what the West is looking at right now with the top three. And with this loss, the Golden State Warriors are 19 and 16. That is the eighth best record in the Western Conference as they currently trail the first place Utah Jazz by eight and a half points. And they're currently sitting a game and a half ahead of the ninth place Dallas Mavericks who are on the outside looking in. Outside of the primetime matchups, we're going to jump to Miami. The Miami Heat hosted the Atlanta Hawks. And in this matchup, the Miami Heat would beat the Atlanta Hawks 109 to 99 after outscoring Atlanta by nine points in the fourth quarter. For the Atlanta Hawks in this matchup, their elite starting point guard Trey Young would finish with 15 points, eight rebounds, nine assists, two steals, and seven turnovers in 36 minutes as Young shot three. Three for 14 from the field, two for eight from three, and a perfect seven for seven from the line. Uh, the Hawks starting center, Clint Capella, would finish with 20 points, 14 rebounds, and three blocks in 36 minutes as he shot nine for 17 from the field and two for three from the free throw line. And the leading scorer for Atlanta would be their starting power forward out of Wake Forest, John Collins, who finished with 34 points, 10 rebounds, and three blocks in 37 minutes as he shot 13 for 21 from the field, two for three from three, and six for seven from the free throw line. For the Miami Heat in this matchup, their elite starting center, Bam Adebayo, would finish with 16 points, 13 rebounds, 5 assists, 3 blocks, and 5 turnovers in 35 minutes as he shot 6 for 12 from the field and 4 for 5 from the free throw line. And the leading scorer for the Miami Heat would be their starting shooting guard, Kendrick Nunn 
who finished with 24 points and seven assists in 33 minutes. His nun shot eight for 15 from the field, four for eight from three, and a perfect four for four from the line. With this win, the Miami Heat are 17 and 17. That is the fifth best, or they are tied with the Celtics for the fifth best record in the Eastern Conference as they are currently on a six game winning streak. In the playoff picture, they are half a game behind the fourth place New York Knicks and the Heat, the Celtics, the Raptors, are all three of those teams are now sitting half of a game ahead of the eighth place Charlotte Hornets in the Eastern Conference as everything stands. And they currently sit five full games behind the first place Philadelphia 76ers. With this loss, the Atlanta Hawks are 14 and 20. That is the fifth worst record in the Eastern Conference. They are currently two and a half games out of the playoff picture as they have lost seven of their last 10 games. Uh, And then jumping out to Boston, the Boston Celtics hosted the Washington Wizards. And in this matchup, the Wizards would find themselves up by five with maybe like a minute left to go. And then Jason Tatum would hit three consecutive clutch layups, three consecutive clutch layups, including the go ahead in the very final seconds on the last possession to put the Boston Celtics up and give them their 17th win of the season. For the Washington Wizards in this matchup, their elite starting point guard, Russell Westbrook, would finish with 24 points, 11 rebounds, four assists, and five turnovers in 36 minutes as Westbrook shot 10 for 22 from the field one for five from three and three for four from the line um, there's small forward off the bench Davis Bertans to finish with 20 points in 26 minutes as well as he shot five for nine from the field five for nine from three and five for five from the free throw line and their leading score would be their elite starting shooting guard out of Florida as Bradley Beal would finish with 46 points seven rebounds two assists and two steals, as well as five turnovers in 39 minutes. Beal shot 16 for 29 from the field, three for six from three and 11 for 12 from the free throw line. For the Boston Celtics in this matchup, their starting senior Daniel Tice would finish with um, 20 points, nine rebounds in 32 minutes as he shot eight for 11 from the field and one for three from three, one three for six from the line. Um, their elite starting point guard Kemba Walker would finish with 21 points, five rebounds, eight assists and two steals in 33 minutes as Walker shot seven for 17 from the field, three for seven from three and four for five from the free throw line. And the leading score for the Boston Celtics and their hero of the night would be their starting would be their elite starting small forward out of my alma mater, Duke, who would finish with 31 points, 18, or I'm sorry, he had 31 points, eight rebounds, three assists, and three steals in 39 minutes as Tatum shot 12 for 22 from the field, three for 10 from three, and a perfect four for four from the line. With this win, the Boston Celtics are 17 and 17. They are tied with the Miami Heat and the Toronto Raptors for the fifth best record in the Eastern Conference. Um, in the playoff picture, they are half a game behind the fourth place New York Knicks, and they are half a game ahead of the eighth place Charlotte Hornets. Um, as the Boston Celtics have won four of their last 10, but they're currently on a two-game winning streak. With this loss, the Washington Wizards are now 13-19. and 19. That is the fourth worst record in the Eastern Conference as they are two and a half games out of the playoff picture behind the Charlotte Hornets. They have won seven of their last 10 games. And of course, this loss would um, end their winning streak, would, would, would win their kind of, it would kind of, uh, it would put a halt in their ascent to the top of the Eastern Conference. That's a way of putting it. And then jumping out to Detroit, the Detroit Pistons hosted the New York Knicks. And in this matchup, the Knicks would beat the Pistons 109 to 90. After outscoring Detroit by, what would this be, 11 in the first half and then eight in the third quarter. For the Detroit Pistons in this matchup, their leading score would be their starting small forward, Jerry, Jeremy Grant, who would finish with 21 points, and eight rebounds in 31 minutes as he shot seven for 19 from the field and five for six from the free throw line. For the New York Knicks in this matchup, their starting shooting guard, R.J. Barrett out of Duke, would finish with 21 points and five rebounds in 35 minutes as he shot eight for 13 from the field, two for four from three, and a perfect three for three from the line. And the leading scorer for the New York Knicks would be their newest all-star as their starting power forward Julius Randle would finish with 25 points, 8 rebounds, 6 assists, and 2 steals in 38 minutes as Randle shot 10 for 18 from the field, 3 for 6 from 3, and 2 for 3 from the free throw line. With this win, the New York Knicks are 18 and 17 as they currently hold the fourth best record in the Eastern Conference. In the playoff picture, they are three and a half games behind the third place Milwaukee Bucks and they are currently sitting half a game ahead of the fifth place Heat, sixth place Celtics, and seventh place Toronto Raptors respectively. As they are currently on a three-game winning streak, they have won seven of their last 10 as a, as, as a team. And with this loss, the Detroit Pistons are now 9-25. and 25. They currently hold the worst record in the Eastern Conference as they are currently sitting... 
seven and a half games out of the playoff picture behind the fifth place Charlotte Hornets. And they have currently they are currently on a three game losing streak, sitting 13 full games behind the first place Philadelphia 76ers. Jumping out to Houston, the Houston Rockets hosted the Memphis Grizzlies. In this matchup, the Grizzlies would beat the Houston Rockets 133-84, to of course, winning this game by 49 points as they, basically, as they virtually dominated the Rockets in every single quarter throughout this game. For the Houston Rockets in this matchup, their leading scorer would be their elite starting point guard, John Wall, who finished with 14 points in 27 minutes. He also, had five, he also had five turnovers on the night as well, as he shot four for 16 from the field and six for eight from the free throw line. And then, of course, tied with them for the team high in points would be their, would be their shooting guard off the bench, or their small forward off the bench, Jay Sean Tate, as he would finish with 14 points in 24 minutes, shooting four for six from the field and six for seven from the free throw line. For the Memphis Grizzlies in this matchup, off the bench, their power forward out of Duke, Justice Winslow, would finish with 20 points uh, in 21 minutes, shooting 8 for 12 from the field and 3 for 4 from the free throw line as he led the entire team in points. And then their start, their elite starting point guard, John ja Morant, would finish with 6 points, 7 assists, and 3 steals in 26 minutes as he shot 2 for 8 from the field and 2 for 2 from the free throw line. With this win, the Memphis Grizzlies are currently sitting at 15-15 and 15, as they are holding on to the 10th best record in the Western Conference. Um, as they are currently sitting a game and a half behind the 8th place Warriors in the playoff picture, they have won 5 of their last 10 games. And they are currently sitting 10 full games behind the 1st place Utah Jazz in the Western Conference. With this loss, the Houston Rockets are 11-21. and 21. That is the second worst record in the Western Conference as they currently trail the Warriors by six and a half games in the playoff picture um, as they are currently on an 11-game losing streak. That is the worst in the NBA at the moment. Uh, jumping out to Minneapolis, the Minnesota Timberwolves hosted the Phoenix Suns. And in this matchup, the Phoenix Suns would beat the Timberwolves 118-99 to after outscoring Minnesota by 14 points in the second half for the Timberwolves in this matchup. Their elite starting center, Carl Anthony Towns, would finish with 21 points and 10 rebounds in 33 minutes as he shot 7 for 16 from the field, 2 for 7 from 3, and 5 for 6 from the free throw line. And the leading scorer for the Minnesota Timberwolves would be their number one overall pick from the 2020 NBA draft, Anthony Edwards, as he finished with 24 points, 5 rebounds, and 3 steals in 35 minutes, shooting 8 for 22 from the field, um, and a perfect 6 for 6 from the free throw line. For the Phoenix Suns in this matchup, their starting center, DeAndre Andre Ayton would finish with 22 points and 10 rebounds in 26 minutes, shooting 9 for 11 from the field and a perfect 4 for 4 from the line. Their elite starting point guard, Chris Paul, would finish with 11 points, 6 rebounds, and 15 assists in 32 minutes as he shot 5 for 8 from the field and 1 for 2 from 3. And the leading scorer for the Phoenix Suns would be their elite starting shooting guard out of Kentucky, Devin Booker, as he finished with 43 points. Five rebounds and five assists in 34 minutes as Booker shot 15 for 26 from the field, one for six from three, and 12 for 13 from the free throw line. With this win, the Phoenix Suns are 22 and 11. They have the fourth best record in the Western Conference as they currently sit half of a game behind the third place Los Angeles Clippers. They are currently three games ahead of the fifth place San Antonio Spurs. And with a two game winning streak, they have won eight of their last 10 um, as they are slowly but surely climbing up the rankings. Um, and then with this loss, the Minnesota Timberwolves are 7-28 and as they currently hold the worst record in the Western Conference and the entire NBA for that matter. As they currently sit 12 full games beyond the 8th place Golden State Warriors. They're on an eight-game losing streak as well um, as this game would just, as with this next game, they very well could see their losing streak hit the double digits as, you know, that's how the number 10 works. And then jumping out to the last and final game of the night, the Sacramento Kings hosted the Charlotte Hornets. And after an amazing back and forth, the Charlotte Hornets would outscore the Kings by nine in the fourth quarter. And then it would be in a, it would be a Malik Monk and one that would give the Charlotte Hornets um, the win over the Sacramento Kings in this one. For the Sacramento Kings, they had four players that scored at least 20 points. Their starting point guard out of Kentucky, De'Aaron Fox, would finish with 20 points and 14 assists in 41 minutes, shooting nine for 22 from the field. Um, their starting power forward out of Duke, of course, go Duke, uh, Marvin Bagley would finish with 24 points and 10 rebounds, as well as two steals in 35 minutes, as Bagley shot 11 for 20 from the field and two for five from three. Their starting small forward, Harrison Barnes, would finish with 28 points, six rebounds and six assists 
in 42 minutes as he shot 10 for 14 from the field, 4 for 7 from 3, and 4 for 5 from the, th- from the free throw line. And the leading scorer for the Sacramento Kings would be their starting shooting guard out of Oklahoma, Buddy Heald, who finished with 30 points and 7 assists in 39 minutes as he shot 10 for 17 from the field, 8 for 15 from 3, and 2 for 3 from the free throw line. For the Charlotte Hornets in this matchup, off the bench, their, their shooting guard out of Kentucky, Malik Bunk, would finish with 21 points, 5 rebounds in the game-winning and 1 attempt. Uh, as he played 31 minutes, he shot... It's 8 for 17 from the field and a perfect 5 for 5 from the line. Their elite starting point guard, LaMelo Ball, would finish with 24 points and 12 assists, as well as 4 rebounds in 39 minutes as he shot 7 for 12 from the field, 1 for 2 from 3, and 9 for 10 from the free throw line. And the leading scorer for the Charlotte Hornets would be their starting power forward out of Kentucky as P.J. Washington finished with 42 points, 9 rebounds, 2 steals, and 2 blocks in 42 minutes as he shot 15 for 23 from the field, 5 for 8 from 3, and a perfect 7 for 7 from the line. With this win, the Charlotte Hornets are 16 and 17. With this record, they currently hold the 8th best record in the Eastern Conference. In the playoff picture, they are half a game behind the 5th place Miami Heat, the 6th place Boston Celtics, and the 7th place Toronto Raptors. As the bottom 4 teams in the Eastern Conference are separated by half a game, that's how close it is. And they are also sitting half a game ahead of the ninth place Indiana Pacers and the 10th place Chicago Bulls who are on the outside looking in. As the Charlotte Hornets have won 6 of their last 10 games. Um, as a team, and then with this loss, the Sacramento Kings are 13 and 21. That is the third worst record in the Western Conference. As they trail the eighth place Golden State Warriors by five and a half games, they have lost nine of their last 10 games as a team. Um, and that those are all the games from yesterday. But looking forward to what's going on today as we enter a whole new month of March, um, starting with the primetime matchups. At 8 o'clock, the New Orleans Pelicans are going to host the Utah Jazz on NBA TV. Um, and following that, at eight at, at 10.30, the Portland Trailblazers are going to host the Charlotte Hornets on NBA TV at 10.30. Outside of those games, at 7 o'clock, the Orlando Magic are going to host the Dallas Mavericks. And the Philadelphia 76ers, holding the best record in the East, are going to host the Indiana Pacers. At 8 o'clock, the Chicago Bulls are going to host the Denver Nuggets. At 8.30, the San Antonio Spurs are going to host the Brooklyn Nets, who very well could jump into the best spot in the East tonight. Um, At 9 o'clock, the Houston Rockets host the Cleveland Cavaliers as the Cavaliers look to extend the Houston Rockets' NBA leading um, losing streak. Um, and those, that's everything that's going on with the NBA. Looking at really quickly to what's going on in college basketball, um, starting off in, in Ohio State, the fourth seed Ohio State Buckeyes hosted the ninth seed Iowa Hawkeyes. And in this game, Iowa would beat Ohio State 73 to 57 behind Luca Garza's 24 points and 11 rebounds. With this win, ninth ranked Iowa is 18 and 7 as they are 12 and 6 in the Big Ten. And with this loss, fourth ranked Ohio State is 18 and 7 as they are 12 and 7 in the Big Ten. Unranked Butler hosted 8th ranked Villanova and were able to pull up an upset versus a top 10 team of the nation as Butler won 73 to 61 behind Chuck Harris's 20 points and 5 rebounds. With this win, unranked Butler is 9 and 13 as they are 8 and 11 in the Big East. And with this loss, 8th ranked Villanova is 15 and 4 as they are 10 and 3 in the Big East. And last but not least, 12th ranked Houston hosted unranked USF South Florida. And in this game, Houston was able to win 98 to 52 behind Dejan Jarreau's 16 points, 8 rebounds, and 6 assists. With this win, 12th ranked Houston is 20 and 3 as they are 13 and 3 in the American Conference. And with this loss, unranked South Florida is 8 and 10 as they are 4 and 8 in the American Conference. Looking forward to what's going on today as we enter the very famed college basketball month of March. At 6 o'clock, 15th ranked Virginia will host unranked Miami on ACC Network. And then following that at 9 o'clock, unranked Oklahoma State will host 7th ranked Oklahoma as Oklahoma looks to gain uh, revenge after Oklahoma State took them to overtime and upset the top 10 team, uh, one of the, the top 10 team that resides within their home state. Um, and that's everything that's going on with college basketball. Jump in to see what's going on with NHL. And of course, um, with this very unique season, I have the precursors with the saying that they all have to play within their own division. So with that said, jumping to the East division, the Boston Bruins were able to go into New York and beat the Rangers 4-1 to one as their center coil would finish with two goals on the day as the Bruins picked up their 12th win of the season. With this win, the Bruins now are holding on to the second best record in the East division alongside the Islanders as they trail the first place Washington Capitals by two points in the table. 
um, staying out with and speaking of the Capitals, the Capitals were able to beat the New Jersey Devils three to two as they won two or as they scored two of their goals in the second period. One of their goals would come from their future Hall of Fame left winger Alex Ovechkin as they picked up their twelfth win of the season. With this win, they currently sit on top of the East Division, two points ahead of the Bruins and the Islanders. And then going back to the Islanders, the Islanders were able to beat the Penguins at home two to nothing as their goalie would finish with twenty saves and a clean sheet against one of the best um, teams in all of hockey. With this win, the Islanders are still, or the Islanders are currently tied with the Bruins for the second best standing in the East Division as they trail the first place Washington Capitals by two points in the table. Um, and jumping out to Buffalo, the Philadelphia Flyers were able to blank the Sabres three to nothing as their left winger Reams Dick would finish with a goal and an assist. With this win, the Flyers now have eleven of them on the season, and they are currently sitting fourth in the East Division as they trail the first place Washington Capitals by three points in the table. Uh, jumping out to the Central, the Nashville Predators were able to beat the Columbus Blue Jackets 3-1 to as they scored a goal in each period to pick up their 10th win of the season. With this win, the Nashville Predators are currently sitting sixth in the table as they trail the first place Tampa Bay Lightning by and the and also the Florida Panthers, for that matter, by nine points in the table. And then jumping out to the last game of the night, the Chicago Blackhawks hosted the Red Wings and were able to pull off a 7-2 win after scoring seven goals in the third period. Their right winger, Patrick Kane, would finish with a goal and two assists. Um, Debrincat, their left winger, would finish with a goal and three assists. And their goalie, Lankinen, would finish with 44 saves on the night against the Red Wings and the, with the Blackhawks picking up their 12th win of the season. They are currently sitting third in the Central Division as they trail the Lightning and the Florida Panthers by one point in the table. That's everything that was going on yesterday with hockey. Looking forward to what's going on today as we enter the month of March. Starting with the primetime games at 7 o'clock, the Ottawa Senators will host the Calgary Flames on ESPN Plus at 7 o'clock. Um, and the other big game to look forward to today will happen between the Edmonton Oilers and the Toronto Maple Leafs is Connor McDavid, um, the league's leading scorer, or at least the, the leader in points, is going to face off against the Toronto Maple Leafs, who currently hold the best record thus far, who currently hold the most wins in the NHL so far. Uh, jumping out to soccer, just to give a little bit of a glimpse as to what's going on um, globally, as we are kind of transitioning towards uh, towards the latter half of the uh, of the soccer season for all these teams. Starting off in the Premier League, Tottenham Hotspur hosted and, and were able to beat Burnley. Uh, Gareth Bale, their Welsh striker would finish with two goals on the day as he would also finish with an assist to Harry Kane as Harry Kane the elite English striker would finish with a goal of his own in the 15th minute um, they were able to score four goals finish with a clean sheet and get three points on the table with this win Tottenham Hotspur is currently sitting eighth in the Premier League as they trail seventh place Everton by a point they're the only team that's ahead of them that's within a, a game of them as they trail first place Manchester City by a total of 23 points so, I mean, I don't think they're going to win it. Uh, also, Chelsea was able to draw with Manchester United, a halt man use progress to try to catch Man City. And with this draw, Chelsea is currently sitting fifth in the Premier League as they trail um, fourth place West Ham by a point. And they're also sitting a point ahead of Liverpool. And then Manchester United with this draw, they currently sit a point ahead of third place Leicester City as they trail first place Manchester City by now 12 points. That's four whole games uh, in the Premier League as Man City just looks to currently run away with it. And Liverpool was able to beat Sheffield United 2 to nothing as with this win, Liverpool is now sitting sixth in the Premier League as they are now in Europa League contention, sitting three points ahead of Everton and one point behind Chelsea in the table as they trail first place Man City by 19 points after leading the Premier League at one point in the season. Um, jumping out to Serie A, Inter Milan hosted Genoa and following their three goals, the first of which coming from their elite Belgian striker Romelu Lukaku would give them the three goals and the three points that they actually need in Serie A. Looking at where they stand, they are currently sitting at the top of Serie A as they are four points ahead of AC Milan at the moment. Um, but it was a, a it, the pressure was on them to win and they actually did pull out the win and then AC Milan was able to beat AS Roma two to one as um Rebic's fifty eighth minute goal would put them up and give them the three points they need they are currently trailing Inter Milan by four points in the table as they currently sit six points ahead of third place Juventus and fourth place Atalanta in the table. 
Um, so that's what the Serie A is looking like at the moment. Jumping into La Liga, Atletico Madrid went to Villarreal and were able to pull off a 2 nothing win as their second goal came from their elite young Portuguese forward jo- Joao Felix in the 69th minute. And looking at what La Liga is looking like, uh, Atletico Madrid is still sitting at the very top of the league as they sit five game or they sit five points ahead of second place FC Barcelona with five points or with one less game played than them. They have one game in hand. And they're also six points ahead of Real Madrid, who have played the same amount of games as they have. So, of course, big win for Atletico Madrid. And then looking out, last but not least, into Ligue 1, PSG didn't play, but the teams that are surrounding PSG um, were able to face off. Lille hosted Strasbourg, and both teams were able to draw as Lille scored an 86-minute goal to, to, to at least keep them from losing the game. And then Lyon would end up drawing with Marseille as they picked up a red card in the 70th minute and no goal was able to be scored. Looking out to what Ligue 1 looks like at the very moment, um, PSG is very well in striking range as they are now one point behind Lille um, with the same amount of games played. And they in, in Lyon, with their draw, sits one point behind PSG. So the top three teams in Ligue 1, uh, Lille, PSG, and Lyon are all separated by a game. So now that puts pressure on all of them to win their next matchups um, looking ahead. And then looking out to what's going on today in the world of soccer as we enter Monday, um, starting in La Liga, Real Madrid will host Real Sociedad as Real Madrid looks to momentarily jump right ahead of FC Barcelona. But with that said, I think that's everything that's going on for today for Monday, March 1st. Um, I want to thank everyone once again for listening to all 26 minutes of this piece. I hope all is well. And once I'm done with my elite profiles, I will come back to you with, um, no, I will come back to you with all of today's exhibitions and elite matchups and performances. And when I come back to you tomorrow on Tuesday, March 2nd, 2021, out here in this quarantine, I want to thank you all once again for listening to my piece. I hope all is well, and I'll catch you tomorrow. Peace out.